Hello, my name is Sally Pinto, and I'm the program director for the Yonkers Nork Neighborhood Naturally Occurring Retirement Community. We serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We are under the auspices of WJCS and the Yonkers Office for the Aging. We also have a resource specialist and a nurse on staff. We conduct virtual programming when partnership with the Yonkers Public Library on a daily basis. Enjoy the program. As always, you can just get yourself comfortable in your chair. You can add some props if you want to have something underneath your feet. Um, if your feet don't touch the floor, that's perfect. Um, I just like to have a little pillow behind my back just to kind of help keep me in a more upright position. Um, and if you get cold, if you get hot, just make sure you've got some extra things so you don't have to exert yourself too much to get up and down out of the chair. So we'll just get started by just kind of settling into the chair. So moving around a little bit, if you need to wiggle it out to kind of start to feel everything connect to the ground and to the chair. You can allow your hands to rest wherever is comfortable. Maybe they rest on your legs or maybe they just kind of dangle by your side today. Maybe you don't want anything kind of holding the hands up. You're welcome to close your eyes or just soften through the gaze. And when you start to feel like you've kind of released some of that wiggling and find a relatively comfortable place to pause. And see if you can just start to settle the body. Start to observe the breath. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. <clears throat> Relax the jaw. And just start to observe and notice the parts of your body that are connected to the chair. So the backs of the legs. Allow those muscles to just soften a little bit more, really trusting the chair to hold you and support you this morning. Feeling your glutes connecting with the chair. And your lower back. Allowing each part of you to soften and release. If you've taken class with me before, I often say even if it's just 1% more, 1% less effort, just starting to move into that direction of letting go. <clears throat> Take just a few more moments here to settle in.
feeling your feet connecting with the floor or if you've got your feet up on a pillow or something just feeling the soles of the feet soften into the ground Take three more big rounds of breath here. Allow all of your attention to be on your breath. Just one more deep breath here. Deep inhale in. And exhale out. And then if your arms aren't already by your side, go ahead and let the arms dangle by the side. And you might even kind of like wiggle them out like you're going to do the wave. Wiggle the fingers. Make sure you're bending a little bit at the elbows. You don't have to move fast and you don't have to move really slow. Just kind of find that movement for you and then start to bring that motion into the shoulders. So just kind of starting to check in with all of the joints in the arms. You might even start to roll the shoulders back. And you can bring the arms into that movement as you roll them back. And then roll them forward. And let's reach the arms all the way up to the sky. It doesn't matter how tall they get. And then on your exhale, just allow the arms to release down. So just feeling that motion of reaching the arms up and then letting them drop down. Let's do one more, reach the arms up. And then let them drop down. Allow your hands to start to rest on the tops of the thighs. And let's take some cat cow. So let's get this spine moving because I don't want us to get stuck in one position for too long. So just start to round the spine. Let the chin come to the chest. Feel like you're trying to just create a little bit of gentle space between each vertebra of the spine. And then start to open the heart, look forward. So now it's almost like you're trying to squeeze them a little bit together. So creating a little bit of space and then compressing the spine a little bit. So just keep moving through that motion of opening the heart and rounding the spine. A few more rounds here. <clears throat> doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting the body moving. It doesn't matter how far that range is. We're just getting our body moving this morning. And with the rain, you might feel a little more crinkly and that's okay. So just observing it. Breathing through it. Let's take one more. And then start to find a neutral spine. And let's just release the feet a little bit. So you might even kind of start to tap the feet almost like you're running. You're gonna try to run out of your chair. And then you can bring the foot forward and just roll out the ankle. Wiggle the toes, 
and just do the same the other way. So we're just starting to move all the joints. We're just starting to observe, check in what's going on, what happened since last night into our bodies. What's going on today? Always bringing kindness. We're just bringing awareness. And you can place the feet back on the floor. And let's go ahead and now rotate the spine towards the right. It doesn't matter if you go right or left, honestly, because we're gonna do both sides. So if you have an arm on the chair, you can totally use the arm to support you, or you can bring your hands to the leg. And then another option too, is if you don't have an arm on the chair is you can always turn yourself. So that way your right shoulder is towards the back of the chair and actually use the back of the chair to help you get into a twist. If you have an arm of the chair though, you're not gonna be able to do that. So just use the arm for support. And again, remember, we don't have to move a lot to just get a little motion. So you might just kind of like look like you drop something over to the right and you're gonna move your whole torso to get there instead of just moving your head. One more breath. Don't forget to always come back to your breath. And then bring your upper body back to the middle. And then to kind of even out, to go into that counter pose, just go the other way. So again, just like you're gonna look for something, like my TV's over here, so I wanna look at my TV, but instead of just turning my head, I'm gonna turn my whole upper body. And again, you can always use the back of the chair, so just nice and gently rotate your way around. You can use the arm of the chair, you can use your legs. Doesn't matter how far you go, we're just getting the spine moving in all directions that it can go. Always bringing yourself back to your breath. Couple more breaths here. And just bring yourself back to the middle. And then you might even move the spine back towards that cat and cow movement. 
and let's just start to do a little bit of the side bend. So we've gone to cat and cow, we've twisted, we've done the rotation of the spine. Now let's get that lateral movement. So it can literally be just letting that right hand, like it's gonna touch the floor, but it's not gonna touch the floor. And just lean over, lean the upper body over to the right. So again, if you have the arm of the chair, it's nice to just kind of lean on it. Feel as if you're trying to create just a little bit of space between each rib on the left side. Then start to bring yourself back to the middle and just lean over to the left side. So like you're trying to create a little bit of space on the right side. Well, forget to breathe. It can be really easy to just bring yourself into a position and then realize that you stop breathing. I can't see you all, but I know that someone was probably holding their breath. Just one more. Inhale and exhale. Come all the way back to the middle. And again, kind of take any movements, move nice and slow that your body needs. Reconnect with your breath. And if anything, it's like talking, thinking about the breath, if anything feels just too much on your body today or just in general, and it doesn't feel good to go into it, you can always close your eyes Focus on your breath and imagine your body going into that movement. It can actually have the same impact as the physical movement itself in that visioning state, which is really cool. So let's just take a pause here for a moment. Reconnect with the breath. One more breath here. So just start to scoot yourself a little forward in your chair. So not so far forward that you fall out, but just a little bit forward so that the you don't have the back of the chair to support you anymore. You really kind of have to feel your body be upright and make sure that your feet can still be flat on the floor. I'm not doing anything with my feet, so it's okay that you can't see them right now. And then just kind of notice, once again, your whole body just connecting with the chair. So there's a little bit less of the backs of the legs. So you might have to bring that awareness back and feel that softness and release again with what's connecting with the chair. Your low back doesn't have the chair to connect to anymore, but can you still kind of release any clenching or tension? And your hands can be wherever is comfortable. We're not doing anything with them for the moment. So just wherever they feel comfortable and where you can kind of help relax the shoulders. 
And then just start to lift the right heel up off of the floor. So the ball of the foot will still be on the floor. And then maybe you lift the whole foot off of the floor or you can keep the ball of the foot on the floor. So I want you to feel like if you lift the whole foot up off the floor, like the movement is actually coming from the hip flexor. So right where the leg and the hip meet. And even if the ball of the foot is still on the floor, I want you to feel like that lift of the heel is actually coming from that muscle in your hip. And it's okay if it's not really clicking right away. It's just a new way to think about lifting the leg. And then you might even play if kind of holding the foot, because I know I've kept you here while I talk. If that foot is still in the air, you might even play with just kind of tapping the toes down, taking a pause, and then lifting them back up. You can move between the two. You're working the muscles, working those hip flexors. So building strength in the hip flexors is really great for your low back. They tend to be pretty weak because we sit a lot. We're gonna lower the foot in one breath, I promise. And then just let the foot come onto the floor. And as the foot comes onto the floor, I want you to really feel that hip flexor like melt, like really feel the muscles relax. So we were building that power and now we want to try to start to let it go. They tend to always be on our hip flexors, but they still can be pretty weak. <clears throat> so we're going to shift to the other side. So just lift your left heel off the floor. Just make sure you do the other side. That's all I care about. <coughs> Again, you can keep the heel lifted. Remember, the legs are actually going to be different, even though we're not even doing too crazy of a movement. But the action and the effort is going to feel different from side to side. So just be mindful of that. And then maybe the toes start to lift. Like for me, my left leg is so much weaker than my right. That's where all my injuries live on the left side. So to lift the toes up is like working so much harder than my right side was. So I'm going to take advantage of dropping my toes down and lifting them up. Really bringing that awareness to my hip flexor. Really feeling like all of that strengthening motion is coming from my hip flexor. Super powerful. Bring yourself back to your breath. The moment you start to realize you're holding your breath, bring yourself back to it. And if it's feeling hard to bring your attention back to it, just go a little less in the effort. It doesn't mean you're being lazier or you're weaker. It just means that you're tuning in with what your body needs today. A couple more breaths. Sometimes the smallest and most subtle movements are actually the most challenging. Right, and you're gonna slowly start to let the foot come onto the floor. And again, I want you to feel like that hip flexor is gonna melt away. And let's just straighten the legs a little bit. So we're starting to just extend the angle of the hips, even though they're still pretty flexed here. Just kind of release the legs, release the back of the knee. You might kind of shake the legs from side to side.
All right, so, so just start to bend into your knees. Now we're gonna come to stand for a couple of moments. If you don't wanna come up and then bring yourself back down, if that's too much today, stay in your chair. I'm gonna give you an alternative to get the same action and movement. So I'm gonna show what it's gonna look like if you're gonna stand all the way up first. So if you stand all the way up, you'll just come to the back of your chair and just hold the back of the chair. And you can rest your forearms onto the chair and just start to walk your feet back. So it doesn't matter how far back your feet go, but I want you to feel we're hinging at the hips here. So we're bringing a little bit of that flexion back into the hip flexors. And you can stay close enough to the chair that your head can even rest on your arms. You can always keep a little bend into your knees. Don't force the backs of the legs straight, especially if they're feeling really tight. Now, if you seat in your chair, you're gonna do a similar movement. Just start to round the spine and feel like you're gonna come forward, almost like you're gonna touch the ground in front of you. And again, it doesn't matter how far you go. Really use your arms to support you on your legs. Feel as if you're trying to pull the shoulder blades away from each other. And this goes for whether you're in the chair or standing. You might feel a little rounding of the spine. If you get dizzy, make sure that your head stays a little bit above your heart. So especially if you're in a chair, if you're standing, it's not gonna matter too much because you're gonna kind of naturally stop when your head finds the chair. But if you're sitting, then just be mindful not to go too far forward and maybe you're just focusing on that rounding of the spine. We're just gonna take two more breaths here. And then nice and slow, start to bring yourself up. So if you're standing up, you can walk your feet closer to the chair. If you're sitting, you can bring yourself up and even start to scoot yourself back on the chair. We're all gonna meet there in a moment. But if you're standing, I just want you to pause here for a moment. You might even rock and sway the hips a little bit. So just allowing the hips to be in more of a neutral for the moment. And everyone will start to find their way back to their chair. If they're not already there. And you can scoot yourself back in the chair. <laughs> that way you can have your whole back kind of resting on the back. And then let's just pause when we get here. Not a crazy amount of movement, but just kind of keeping that mindfulness flowing throughout our practice today. Just one more breath. So we're gonna take that same intention of lifting the right heel, and you can stay at any point today. Lift the right heel, step one. Option to lift the right foot totally off of the floor. 
option three is going to be to bring the ankle on top of the knee. Now, an awesome way to get this cross without going so high is to just walk that right ankle in front of the left ankle. And then kind of just tuck the feet a little bit closer to you. Now I'm thinking of any movie that has um, a princess in it, and this is how they teach them to sit. <laughs> um, so you can be with a cross at the ankle, or that ankle can be on top of the knee, which might be somewhere in the middle. A little bit harder to hold it if it's just kind of hanging on the shin. So I recommend either the knee or the ankle, just so that you can relax a little bit more, but you do have the option to go anywhere in between. And just allow yourself to find and pause this position for a couple of moments. And as always, I'll give another option if you'd like to go deeper, but you might be perfect where you are, so stay where you're at. And sometimes it's nice to play a little bit like, oh, I'm really good here, but what happens if I go a little bit forward, does that feel okay? Maybe I keep going or maybe I just stay where I'm at. So you might lean a little forward. It's gonna kind of likely change the stretch in the outside of the right leg. Maybe even the, the glutes a little bit. We're really just kind of getting all sides of the leg here. And you might even feel it on the inside of the right leg, depending on where your tension is really holding on to this morning. Really kind of just like lean on your arm, like on your arms. <laughs> like use your arms so you can just lean on your leg. We're all about support today. always reconnecting with your breath. Couple more breaths here. We're always moving in slow motion. Just nice and slow, start to bring yourself up. Pause. You might even kind of relax the upper body a little bit. And then you can use your hand to bring the leg back down or just nice and slow, start to uncross the leg. And I just kind of let my ankle slide down the leg until it reached the floor. Now, especially if you had that leg all the way up on the knee, you might notice that your hip flexor was working a lot. So can you bring a little bit of awareness? And I want you to, again, come into that melting sensation here. Like you're just trying to release the hip flexor a little bit more. So that doesn't have to work so hard to hold you in the seated position.
Just one more breath. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now forget what just happened, forget where you went, and we'll just start fresh on the second side because they're different and they need different things. So just start by lifting your left heel. Maybe start to lift the foot. <laughs> and then you have the option to bring the ankle on top of the knee. You can use your hands to bring it there or the ankle can cross in front of the right ankle. And again, it can be anywhere in the middle, but I want you to be able to kind of release a little bit more. So having it on, if you can't be on the knee, then make sure to have it at the ankle just because it allows you to relax a little bit more. And it's still targeting the outside of the, the top leg. It might not feel as much, or it might feel like a lot, but it's getting exactly where it needs to be for your body today. You are welcome to stay right here, or you can start to shift a little forward. Again, you're just shifting the upper body. Basically just adjusting the leverage of the stretch. Always reconnecting with your breath. A few more rounds here. If you're moving in slow motion, I will always say that. And just nice and slow, start to bring yourself up. Let your breath guide you. And then you'll nice and slow, just allow that foot to come all the way back to the floor. And again, for a moment, bring that awareness to the hip flexor. Can you release it? Feel like it's melting. Just a little bit. We're gonna just allow your legs to just kind of find a comfortable place to pause. So having the soles of the feet on the ground or on a pillow or just something to just kind of let them release a little bit so they're not floating. Just like reconnecting with your seat. And let's reach the arms up and out to the side. So just watch out if you've got walls near you or anything near you. And then actually you can feel like you're kind of just stretching from the side. And so what my body instinctively wanted to do is kind of like yawn <laughs> and stretch. 
And then I'm gonna give myself a hug with my right arm on top. And it doesn't matter if my hug is just holding my upper arms or my shoulders. And then keeping myself in that hug, I'm just gonna drop my chin to my chest. And then nice and slow, start to lift your head up. Unwrap the arms. And then give yourself a hug again, the other way. Really subtle, but it does make a difference. So now your left arm is on top if you were going with my words. Otherwise, just make sure you do the other side. And then allow your chin to drop to your chest. And again, it doesn't matter where your hands are on your hug. Apologies for my pup. She's in a deep slumber. And then somebody was in the hall talking. It disrupted her slumber. <laughs> And just one more breath. We're not here for too long today. And just nice and slow, start to lift your head up. Unwrap the arms. You can stretch them long again. You're trying to push the walls away. And then let the arms come by your side. They can rest on top of your legs. Then let's just start to bring the right ear to the right shoulder. So let's just bring a little bit of gentle awareness to the neck. Super simple movement, but can make a massive difference. Especially if you're holding a lot of your tension in your neck or your jaw. You're not trying to like force the head to go really far to the right. You're really just kind of letting it move and just letting gravity take over there. Okay. Kelly. Two more breaths here. And nice and slow, bring your head all the way back to the middle and then let your left ear drop to your left shoulder. And remember, we're not trying to force it to touch. We're not even lifting the shoulder up to meet the ear. We're letting the shoulder stay relaxed and we're just allowing the head to drop to the side. Okay. Quiet.
Little more breaths here. Then just nice and slow, start to bring your head up. You might even just kind of gently rock the chin across the chest. Sure, just like these gentle head movements are really awesome to add into your day. Like as frequently as you remember. And just always reminding yourself to release the jaw and relax the shoulders. We can almost not even notice it sometimes until we actually let go. So we'll begin to set ourselves up for our final Shavasana. So I'll always invite you that you can come onto the ground if you want to come out of your chair, or you can take Shavasana and our final meditation in the chair. So if you're staying in the chair, I'm gonna stay in my chair so you can see me. I'm just gonna scoot myself a little forward. <laughs> you can keep the feet flat on the ground. Maybe turn your palms up. Really allow, like feel like you're trying to keep your body aligned, but also feel like you're kind of letting your body just release into the, the chair, holding you into this place. And just start to close your eyes if they're not already closed. Just kind of take a few moments when you first arrive to just let yourself get really comfy. I want you to begin to notice your next inhale. And then notice your next exhale. Feel the air come in. And the air go out. And then maybe you even begin to count. So as you inhale, one. Exhale, two. Inhale, three. Exhale, four. This kind of can help you stay in the space of the breath. So keep counting. Each inhale and each exhale, they're each their own numbers. If you lose count, just start back at one. When you get to 10, start back at one. Don't think that you have to count too high. I don't want to pull you out of it. the intention with the breath. Keep counting as long as it helps you stay focused. If you notice that you stop when you stop counting, that you start to get your attention pulled away, bring yourself back to the count. Otherwise, you can start to let the count go. 
just allow your body to take these last few minutes of class in complete and total gratitude for your practice today. Shavasana. Starting to bring some awareness back into this space. Starting to bring some awareness back into the body. Wiggling your fingers and your toes. Rolling out your wrists and ankles. And rocking them from side to side. And just starting to bring a little bit of that movement. You can slowly start to open up your eyes when you feel ready. Maybe just allow your hands to rest on your heart space. Just thanking yourself for making it to your chair today, for your practice, for your energy, for your breath and movement, and most importantly, for yourself. Namaste. Hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.